What is up guys? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how we can set alerts for certain cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum and Ripple. As you can see, I've set the target goal for 50,000 euros for Bitcoin, 1,800 euros for Ethereum and 0.87 euros for the Ripple. And once we reach the goal, it's going to say that our target value has been reached and it's also going to update the values every 30 seconds. And we're going to be using an API that allows us to use this with no limitation, which means every 30 seconds we will retrieve new values, as you can see right here. And it's going to update in live time. So as you can see right now, the Bitcoin rose by 20 euros. So we're getting closer to the target. And as soon as it goes above the target goal, it's going to tell us that our target value has been reached and that will be a good moment for us to sell, in other words. And as I mentioned earlier, this script is going to run forever as long as you want it to run. So it is great for playing around with Python and retrieving these values. As you can see, it updated once again, and this time the Bitcoin dropped. But let's get started immediately by creating a new Python project. And I'm just going to be using Python 3.8 for this, but the other Python versions should work fine because we're not going to be using anything too complicated. Let's go ahead and create a new Python file. And the first one is going to be for our API key. So we're just going to name it keys. So now go ahead and open your browser and you want to type in nomics API and it's going to take you to nomics.com. And on nomics.com, you'll see that there will be an API section up here. And all you have to do is click on that. And it's going to show you a button where you can get a free API key. So click on that. Then all you have to do is enter your email address and provide a quick reason why you want to use this API and it will send you the API to your email. As you can see right here, we have unlimited requests and it will limit it to the rate of one request per second, which is fine for this testing purpose. So once you've signed up for the API key, just go ahead and type in nomics API key. And inside here, you want to insert the API key that they've sent to you in your email. And once you've inserted it there, we can go ahead and create a new file, which is going to be another Python file. And we're just going to call this main. Now, the next thing we have to do inside here is open the terminal so we can go ahead and install a few packages such as the requests module. And then we should go ahead and pip install pandas to manage our data. Perfect, and as soon as we've downloaded those two packages, we can go ahead and get started with the imports. So the first one we want to import is the requests module. And after that, we're going to import our keys module so we can use our API key. And then we should import pandas as PD. And finally, from time, we are going to import the sleep function. And the first function we want to create is the function that actually gets the cryptocurrency rates. So we're gonna type function get crypto rates and inside here we need to specify a base currency which can be any currency you want i'm going to stick with the euro because that's the easiest one for me to understand and after that we want to also specify what kind of assets we want to get the prices for and by assets i mean the cryptocurrencies and this is going to be a string and inside this string we're going to use commas to separate the values we want to get so for example for a default parameter we're just going to go ahead and insert the bitcoin followed by ethereum followed by xrp and there shouldn't be any spaces between these then inside here we need to provide a request url then type in https double dot double slash api.nomics.com slash version one slash currencies slash ticker. Then we should go ahead and create a payload, which is going to hold all of our parameters that we want to insert into our endpoint. So it's going to be a dictionary. And the first one is going to be the API key, which is just named key. And then we have to refer to our keys file and enter our nomics. API key. Then we should go ahead and provide the convert value, which is going to be the base currency you want to convert the cryptocurrency into. Now we're going to go ahead and provide some IDs, which is just going to be this part right here. So just enter assets as the value. Then we can go and set the interval to one day. Then let's go ahead and create this response, which is just going to equal the requests.get. And we have to insert the URL and give it some parameters, which is going to be the payload. Then let's turn this into some data, which is going to be the response.json. Next, we want to go ahead and create a few values. So we are going to create first the 
cryptocurrency and then a crypto underscore price followed by the crypto timestamp. And all of these are going to equal empty lists. So we have to add three empty brackets, just like that. Then we're going to create a for loop, which is going to extract the data from the JSON, and it's going to insert it into these lists so we can then later insert it into our pandas data frame. So to do this, we're gonna go ahead and create a for asset in data loop. And inside here, we're going to refer first to our cryptocurrency, and we're going to append the asset at the position of currency. Now we're going to refer to the crypto price and we are going to append the asset at the index of price. And finally, the crypto timestamp, which we are going to append assets at the index of price underscore timestamp. And if you're confused where I got these values from, you can go ahead and just type in print data and run the program because this will give you the entire JSON and you will find out that these are values inside the JSON that you can refer to. And the asset just refers to each of the cryptocurrencies that we've created. But the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and convert this to some raw data. And to do that, we're just going to create another dictionary. And the first one is going to have a keyword of assets, which is just going to take our cryptocurrency list as a value Now we're going to refer to the rates by typing rates and that's going to be the crypto price and at the bottom we will just have a list of the timestamps so we're going to type in timestamp and this is going to equal the crypto timestamp list then we should go ahead and create a data frame which is going to equal pd dot data frame and inside here we are going to insert our raw data and this whole function is going to return this data frame. But for now, let's go ahead and print this so I can show you exactly what we've created so far. And we're just going to go down here and call this function, which is get crypto rates. And we don't need to specify anything because we've inserted some default parameters such as the euro for the first one. And for the assets, we're going to get Bitcoin, Ethereum and the Rippleback. But of course, you can edit these values if you want to change that. So let's go ahead and run this program. And what you'll notice here is that we will get the assets, which is the Bitcoin, the Ethereum and the Ripple, the rates and the timestamp of when they retrieved these rates. But let's go ahead and convert this. Let's pretend to USD. And let's also specify that we want to get something else instead of these three assets. And of course, at any point of this program, you can just go ahead and specify the currency you want, such as USD. And let's pretend we want to get DOT instead. So now if we go ahead and rerun the program, you'll notice that we are going to get the USD rate four dots. It's going to give us the timestamp of the retrieval and you can put whatever you want inside there. Let's just go ahead and specify USD instead of Euro. And you'll notice that we'll also get the USD rate for what we had earlier. So it's a highly flexible function that you can use for many purposes, but uh, let's continue on with this program so we can actually retrieve this information and use it to set an alert. So now we can go ahead and delete this print statement because we will not be using that. And we can also delete this function right here. The next function we're going to create is the function that sets the alert. So we're just going to type in set alert. And inside here, we need to insert a data frame. Then we need to provide an asset that we want to set the alert for. And we also want to set an alert high price. Next, we need to go ahead and retrieve the crypto value from our data frame. And to do that, we just have to go ahead and type in crypto value is going to equal a float and that's going to be the data at the index of data, which is going to be at the index of the assets. And that's going to be equal to the asset we want to retrieve the value for. Then we also have to write rates here and we need to convert this into an item. We need to write data frame here and not just data. So data frame, data frame, and it should look like this and everything should be working now. Next, we're going to go ahead and create a string, which is going to tell us the alert price and the price that the cryptocurrency is currently at. So we're going to create this variable, which is called details, and it's going to equal a formatted string. And the first value we're going to insert is the asset followed by two dots. And we are going to insert the crypto value and the target, which is going to equal the alert high price. 
And as you may have guessed it, the alert system itself is no more than a simple if else statement. So all we have to type in here is if the crypto value is more or equal to the alert high price, then we can go ahead and print our details plus the string that tells us we have achieved our value. So here we can type in two arrows and target value reached. And inside here would be a good place to insert also some additional code that maybe sends an SMS to your phone or to your email or something that actually notifies you in real life about this price reach. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna keep it simple and only insert the string that tells us we have reached the target. Else, we're just going to print the details of the current cryptocurrency. And finally, we need to create the infinite while loop. So here we're gonna type in alert while loop. And before we create it, we need to create a variable which is called loop and it's going to have the value of zero. And then while this loop is true, which will be true forever, we are going to print a formatted string with a lot of lines. And inside here, the first thing we want to insert is the loop. So we know how many times it has retrieved the values. Then you can go ahead and copy this line and place it on the other side. It just makes it so much more legible when you're reading the values. And just to make sure that we can handle some exceptions, we're going to create a try and catch block and that will prevent the program for, from stopping for no reason. So inside here, we need to actually create our data frame or get our data frame. So we're gonna type in get crypto rates and that's just going to retrieve the values that we have specified over here. Or you can define your own of course, but we're just gonna keep it simple and use the predefined values from earlier. Now we can go ahead and set an alert and we need to insert our data frame here plus the currency that we want to get the alert for such as Bitcoin. And we need to also insert a number that we want our Bitcoin to reach before it tells us that we have reached our goal. So we're gonna type in 50,000 300.50. And one thing I forgot to mention is that you can only refer to the values that you have referred to inside here. So for example, right now we have Bitcoin, Ethereum and Ripple. If you want to refer to other values or set alerts for other values, you're going to have to include them into this string where it says Bitcoin, Ethereum and Ripple. Otherwise, this will be referencing nothing. But let's go ahead and set an alert for the other two. So we're gonna go ahead and type in data frame, Ethereum. And for this, we want to reach the value of 1800.70 or 0.80. And finally, we want to set an alert for our ripple. So XRP, and we're going to set it at 870 or 0.870. And in case something goes wrong, we're going to create an exception. So accept exception as E. And inside here, we're just going to print that we couldn't retrieve the data. Trying again. And then each time we go through this loop, we want to increment the loop by one. And we also want to make the program sleep for 30 seconds before it tries again to retrieve new data. Now let's go ahead and actually test the program. So we're going to run it. And as you can see, right now it has reached the target value for Ethereum and it has got the recent values for the Bitcoin and it also has the target values displayed there as well. But now let's wait and see what happens in 30 seconds. So as you can see, it retrieved some more data and this time it updated our Bitcoin and it dropped in value by three euros and Ripple increased by 0.2 and everything is moving and working correctly. And let me just show you how to add different values in case you're still curious about that. So what I was trying to say earlier is if you want to get other values, you're going to have to get inside this crypto rates function and you're going to have to specify them explicitly. So for example, we're going to go ahead and type in assets and that's going to equal first our Bitcoin, our Ethereum, our Ripple, and then we're also going to include dots. Now we can go ahead and set an alert for dots, of course. So all we have to do is copy that, add dot here. And since I have no idea how much dot is worth, we're just going to insert a thousand and we're gonna click on run. Now you're going to notice that dot has been added to the list and right now it's valued at 37 euros and my target is far too high. So we will probably never reach that, but I can dream of course and yeah, that's actually all I wanted to show you in this cryptocurrency tutorial. I hope this helped you with understanding how you can set custom alerts in Python. 
And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.